right, that was that was not the best. <laughs> Hi everybody, thank you so much for waiting. Sorry about that. It's very rare that I allow my day to interfere with the live stream or vice versa, but things have been a little chaotic and slow at Bush Gardens Williamsburg. I'm popping in a mic real quick. Sorry, let me get chat up. Let's see. Catching up on chat real quick. Yeah, it's having issues like every other park this season. It just stopped needing reservations. I don't think they were ready at all for the crowds that came because now you don't need reservations. Yes, um, Coaster Mom, line cutting today. I saw maybe four instances of line cutting. There's not really anything, anything monitoring that or doing anything about it. It's just happening. And you can't do much about it. I mean, you would have to uh, be that guy and say something about it. Yeah, I went on Tempesto. I timed it. It was like 36 seconds of an experience with a 90-minute wait. Insanity. They weren't selling uh, quick cues, like single quick cues for it. Otherwise, I would have jumped on that. But thank you so much, everybody, for your patience. I'm just putting in my charger right now. And we're going to hang out at least till the fireworks. The only thing I want to do at the end of the night is ride back row of Apollo's Chariot. So until then, is there anything you guys want to see or explore? Should we go see the animals? I actually haven't had a chance to see the animals today. I feel like I've been here near 10 hours. No, not 10 hours. I got here around like 1030 or so, and I was just able to get on this as, my, as the last of the whole set. And I didn't even go on Apollo's Chariot. That's how slow it's been today. Oh, here it goes. So you can kind of see it rocks back and forth. And then it goes for the full. You go through that so slow. It's so bad. You just kind of hang there. Really put the uh, restraints. You have to put some trust into the restraints. Yeah, they removed the reservation system. Definitely the staff hasn't been able to handle it. And then in addition to that, there's been line cutting. I saw that when I did the little visit after King's Dominion. And then I saw it a bunch here today. Pompeii went down. Most everything was at a nine, like somewhere between like 60 and 90 minute wait. Um, Griffin a little more so because it opened late today. Lockers, there's just n not enough of them. And I think the problem is a lot of people aren't ending their rentals but even still with a 90 minute wait you need way more lockers to accommodate all the people um there was a crazy line for this roman freeze just earlier now that i'm seeing it's kind of light um this is one of the places i think where they sell dole whip if anybody knows about that actually i'm gonna ask excuse me sir do you guys sell dole whip at this location yes thank you so yeah, they sell uh, Dole Whip at that location. The line looks all right. Uh, I don't know if I could go for one. Maybe, maybe tomorrow. I am gonna come back for just a little bit because I didn't get to experience everything. So I'm gonna probably come back tomorrow. But yeah, sorry, I'm gonna catch up with chat now. Um, hey Jen, green tea drinker, what's up? Chris Mitchell, what's up? Hello Vanessa, Coaster Mom. Heather O'Brien, welcome! Two tickets, great to have you! Hello, hello! Curtis Mitchell wants to go to Verboten. Okay, we can definitely go there. The Rocket 2 at Lake Compounds is better. Agreed! Fear Phobia Coaster is definitely much better. But yeah, every park is having issues. This one is no exception. They just were not ready. There's still a lot of staff that appear to be training as well. So, what you gonna do? Can't do much about it. Um, but while we're walking here, we can 
say hi to uh, Pantheon, which, do you guys think it'll actually open this year? I'm starting to think maybe it's going to open next year. At this point. We already saw it testing. I don't know if anybody actually got on it. Not enough staff everywhere during this pandemic. Seems to be the case. Seems to be the case. I had no idea that so many... Wow, that spike is huge. That is a tall spike. <laughs> uh, but sadly, I guess I'll have to come back next year. And hopefully next year, the other stuff is open, like the river, uh, the Rhine River Cruise. And um, the Skyride wasn't open today. And I'm going to come back tomorrow just to be able to go on the train and see some of the animals and stuff. Because, again, I spent this whole day in lines. It was miserable. You were hoping for Halloween? Yeah, I, I would say if it's going to open, it's going to be either in the fall. But actually, wait, this is a year-round park now, or since COVID, because they started doing like limited operations and festivals and stuff. So potentially, potentially it could open a little bit. Hey, this thing. It maybe it could open like later on. Um, where am I going? I just sorry. Realized I was going the wrong way. Wanted to go to Pantheon and then I didn't turn around. Yes, I remember people have like footage of it testing throughout the entire ride, so it's like ready to go. And then not too long ago, speaking of seas parks that are that don't have their stuff open um iron guazi that was testing not too long ago with like executives and workers and stuff so i don't understand it just seems like bad business it's just sitting there clearly you need the capacity but maybe it's staffing they need to like train up a team for that and maybe they don't have it yet No, oh, the lines were the lines were terrible, and then well, like Pompeii, I waited 45 minutes, and it broke down. It's almost there. Such bad timing, and uh, yeah, lines were were rough. And then to get cut by people, like to have people ahead of you, and then all of a sudden, like four of their friends come up through the line, like, hey, hey, I saved you a spot. Like, I don't think it's supposed to work that way, or just not, like on Pompeii, just. A group of six just straight up walked through uh, ahead of everybody as if they had like a disability pass or one of the quick queues. They walked through the queue and then just stopped and nobody said anything. I ate at, uh, what's it called? The, 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 it's the giant German area. I forgot what it's called. Brauhaus? Something like that? I, I forgot. I already forgot. Okay, we're gonna hang a left in this little area. Alright, these paths. These paths are very pretty, but not meant for big crowds. Same with the bridges. Very pretty, but they act like funnels for lots of people. The Fest House. Oh, I'm so sorry. I am bumping into people. It's terrible. It's a terrible time. <laughs> I didn't have the finest chicken fingers. No, I didn't. I should stop. I should stop somewhere though, shouldn't I? I don't know. I was contemplating coming back for Halloween, but after what I've seen, I don't know. I'm gonna keep an eye out though. Keep, like keep an eye out for like how people think it's running things are maybe go sm more smoothly in August or something but yeah I was seriously contemplating maybe doing the uh, Halloween events at both Kings Dominion and Bush Gardens but we shall see I'm not sure there's still plenty to see that's local to me so I don't know if coming all this way would be worth it and 
Also, their music is so loud. Um, but this little area is beautiful when there's enough space to see everything and there's not a ton of people. But yeah, it's been a weird day, heck of a day. It's, to summarize, they weren't ready for it. Weren't ready. Last Sunday, a kid was in such a hurry to be the first at Candemonium that he acted like he knew the people behind us to cut the sweet lanes. <laughs> That's hilarious. What did the people do in response to that? I would have called them out immediately. It's like, or just called them a ridiculous name that would embarrass him. Hey, Charged One X. Uh, best coaster I rode today was probably Alpengeist, followed by um, Verbolton. My favorite is actually Apollo's Chariot. So I think actually it would go in that order. Not that the order of my favorites really matter, it's, <laughs> but uh, I would do um, Apollo's Chariot, Alpengeist, and then Verbolton. That would be my top three here. I wasn't too keen on uh, Loch Ness Monster, just because it felt like the entire ride just served for the interlocking loops. Although the helix that was inside or in the in the tunnel was really cool and then i wasn't too keen on invader either it had some pretty strong laterals but i usually look for airtime in my wooden coasters i respect that it did it decently it's a cool little layout but not my not my cup of tea all right so it looks like this is fireworks viewing over here we can uh maybe watch a train or two of Verbolton go by. Let me just get a little further away from the uh, speakers. My goodness. Alpengeist was pretty intense. Oh, I wish I had done Verbolton instead of Griffin. Maybe that one wouldn't have broken down. Oh, but Griffin, I thought it was great. I did front row and the two drops that it has were amazing and I didn't don't think I've ever done a coaster that did a water element like that but that being said it would still be my fourth in the park yeah it seems like I missed out on some pretty cool coasters that were here a while ago um, there was Drakenfire and Big Bad Wolf those two sounded like they were amazing in keeping with Bush Gardens commitment. You only like the drop at Invader. Uh, it was alright. Yeah, there were parts of Nessie that were good, but overall, I don't rate it that highly. And I think Alpengeist was my favorite of the ones I rode today with Verbolton. Being a close second, I did not expect so much to happen indoors, in the indoor element, because I haven't watched a POV or anything like that. The Wild Ketza is at Adventure Park. Oh, that's right, they moved it. Oh, here it comes. So they got launched out of the indoor section right there just after the drop. I think the other reason I liked Alpengeist and Verbolton was because the theming was so good. Yeah, Big Bad Wolf was, I believe, a suspended arrow coaster. And they actually, I heard in the news that somebody spent like 10 grand buying one of the trains. Or not the trains, but just want an individual car, not the whole train. But yeah, I heard that the Wildcat now is at a Metro Park. I think all of their coasters are open, so I'm definitely going to have to get out there soon. Let's see, where can I exit here? And then on the other side here, I don't know how dark it is. Um, there's unfortunately the boats. <laughs> no Rhine River cruise today. Hopefully they open that soon. But let's see, we have... This is a cool bridge down there because you can see Loch Ness Monster, Griffin, and a little bit of uh, the Cobra Roll actually for Alpengeist.
So yeah, I think this little area is super cool. Unfortunately, there are no coasters going by right now. Oh, there goes a little bit of uh, Griffin and now Loch Ness Monster. I don't know if you guys can see the interlocking loops on the live stream. I thought Alpengeist was real intense in the first half and then it kind of meanders back to the station in the second half. It did have the um, zero G rolls in the second half though, but the first half is just amazing. It's so good. I didn't find it as intense. It like dropped off after the break run. And then it's kind of like, oh, we're back. And it takes you it takes you back pretty um like very smoothly, very gently. It's not like uh, Batman the Ride at Great Adventure where it's just like you they just slam on the brakes and you do that little oh and it, and things the restraints dig into your chest. Yeah, it was nice to finally get on Griffin after all that hype. It felt a little short, and the, I've never been on something that had the two drops like it did, so the tempo felt a little weird to me. Um, after having done, like, Val Raven and Yukon Striker, this one feels like it must be an earlier generation or something like that. Is there a haunted house on July 31st? Oh, I'm not sure. Uh, the best dive coaster I've been on. Oh, there's a preview? I haven't heard about that. I will have to email Gabriel, because I'm not sure. That would be amazing. So this dive coaster is an earlier gen. All right. I don't know if I've even said this out loud, but one of my goals is to go on every dive coaster in the country and then eventually the world. That is a goal of mine. I love dive coasters that much. But the best one I've been on was Yukon Striker. Interesting. I will have to ask around if anybody else has heard about that. Because I know some YouTubers just straight up make things up sometimes for the clicks. Like a lot of people did with El Toro. There were all types of weird stories coming out that I could never verify. I highly recommend Canada's Wonderland do two days, a day and a half. You need more than a day. There's so many, especially if you're credit hunting. If you're not credit hunting, then don't worry about it. But especially right now, the lines, even just for the clones, for the boomerang and the wild mouse, they get ridiculously long. Do you know for sure they got info from, from the park? Like... I don't even know how to verify stuff like that until they make announcements, like, meh. I don't know. Unless you think they're reliable, like, themselves and don't, aren't prone to, like, making stuff up for views. Do I think any more rides here are more intense? More intense than Alpengeist at the beginning? Now, first half of Alpengeist was the most intense I experienced today. Uh, Verbolten indoors was pretty intense, but I, that's probably because I had no idea what to expect. Um, Nessie over here, I feel like, was pretty intense at parts, but only because it's an aging arrow. It was like intense, but not in a good way. It was like, hold on, let's do these interlocking uh, loops and ride history, but I'm probably not going to ride this ever again as cool as it looks. Oh, more intense than Gale Force? No, I don't think... No, Gale Force, to me at least, wasn't that intense as a whole. I actually just giggled my ass off on that one. Excuse my language. All right, I think we're going to go over towards the actual station of Verbolton. And then... I'm not sure. We can walk through Germany. And then over to France. Maybe we could watch the dive coaster for a little. Yeah, no, I love Gale Force. I think it looks so cool. But um, as far as intensity, eh, I didn't really rate it that high. I just thought it was really fun. I wonder how hard I'm gonna get copyright struck on all of this with all these speakers on this bridge. 
Like there is one set up on every one of these tents. Do you want the limited events back? <laughs> Why, because you're seeing the crowds? <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, I've had to kind of waddle through this park because the crowds are like that. Again, beautiful park, too many people for how it was designed. It just, it's not built to handle this. You would like need to widen all the paths and the bridges and all that to accommodate the amount of people that are flocking out here. <laughs> I wonder what it was like during the uh, the limited events. I think they they should have kept reservations going, to be honest. So like they went from a drip to just opening up the, that tap like completely all the way. It's awful. Let's see. Here's the uh, the Mech Tower. Mech Tower? I don't know how to say that with the umlaut. I know they tried to make it look like Mach, but it's like Mech, Mech, or something like that. Right? I don't know, but it um, doesn't appear to be operating right now. And here goes the queue for Bolton. Fair Bolton. What kind of car is that that they have up front? Let's see. A Targa? Is a Targa a thing? Hmm. It's a little cramped today, yes. So what happened? <laughs> I don't know what the story is behind this, but it's kind of funny that they have that out there. I do like this, the Verbolten Black Forest Tours. And then this kind of like unassuming house with all the weeds over it. I didn't get a sense of what the story was. So like, did the Black Forest come alive or something and like take over? I have no idea. But then you go into a garage and they shoot you out of it. It's like, okay, your tours are very aggressive. I wonder if you can still see stuff over here. Oh my gosh, this music feels like it's in my skull. They're pulling a Six Flags here. Hey, Melly Mel, welcome. Let's see if we can watch Verbolton go off. Ver, ver wildert Pflanze. Auf Flora nicht. Es gibt keinen Versuch. Yoda. <laughs> They quoted Yoda in German? Is that what's happening? Oh, Targa is a type of Porsche. Uh, I didn't know that. The waits were between 60 and 90 minutes for the most part. All dickety day. Melly Mel is the one who got me to go to that Harry Potter store put it to the front of my priorities there and um, yeah I dropped a lot of money got some cool stuff made a vlog about it hopefully I'll have that up next week waiting for Verbolton where wo is das wo ist Verbolten oh I'm not doing a haul video those never do well for me Nobody wants to see that. Yes, you're a very bad influence. Here it comes. Ausgezeichnet. You gotta leave? All right, have a good night. I wonder if you guys, uh, um, a haul video. There it goes. You can see it catch the LIMs and it just, whoop. <laughs> Um, that's not what my channel does, though. I used to do haul videos when I had a Funko Pop channel, and I did mystery boxes and all that stuff. Um, yeah, haul videos would be like me making a whole video about what I bought at the Harry Potter store. Not a vlog, 
but me like sitting down and showing you all the things that I bought. Some people are super into that. That's n not my thing anymore though. Verbolton should technically not have slow dispatch with the double load station, but they never use it. Oh man, they have, they've had like a 90 minute wait all day. So what the heckers? Why don't they step up? Yeah, that's where I ate, the fest house. I didn't go there when there was an Oompa band though. Just a DJ. <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't watch that. I don't watch those really anymore. So if I'm not watching them, I feel weird making them. Because I legit watch a lot of like theme park vlogs. Not just to learn about, but to kind of see other people's takes and opinions. So like, I'm making the kind of content that I would want to watch, you know? You ate in France last this time. You love watching merch hauls. The only time I really liked watching merch hauls was when they were from like Tokyo Disney because their merch game is like next level. Speaking of merch games, I'm not a big fan of the merch here because it all looks like stuff that belongs on like spray painted on the hood of a pickup or a monster truck. But where where is it? Where's an example here? Oh, but they do have pins and some of the pins are fun. They have a lot of the pins that I've seen at Sesame Place, which I need to go to this year. I haven't actually been. Um, and I see they have like old school mascots and stuff. Clydesdale, the Enchanted Laboratory. You, I don't even know what some of this. Uh, they have a Celtic Fire one. I actually watched this show. Realize that I'm not a big fan of Irish step dance. I much prefer hoofing by the likes of like uh, um, I'm gonna blank on names, of course. Uh, Savion Glover and Gregory Hines. That's more my style. <laughs> They have a Pantheon 2020 pin. Get your 2020 pin here. Let's see, the Cutpack Water Coaster. You know, this is not a bad idea that this is giving me. Maybe I'll go to the water park early tomorrow and then come back here for a little bit and then make the crazy drive home. Um, who is this tree and some fairies? I don't understand. Anyway. Um, I just see kids stuff. Just see kids stuff. Oh, here we go. So, yeah. What I was saying before is, like, some of this stuff looks like it should be on the hood of a car or pickup truck or monster truck. Like, look at that. This is the Griffin hat. I don't know if I'm bold enough to rock this. I don't know. <laughs> the old OE pinbacker cards doesn't use. Yes. Yes. Oh, that's cute. Invader and Ireland. That's it. The Alpen guy's hat, though, is kind of fun. This one I kind of like. It's intense as heck, but I kind of like it. And if that wasn't enough, they also have a shirt. Pretend it's Fox. <laughs> I don't know. But um, kind of contemplating uh, a hat t shirt combo of some kind. I wish that this is like subtle enough for me that I would probably get it, but they only have a youth size there. And uh, no, my big head is not squeezing into that. The shirt's pretty cool though. They're Bolton. Did like that one. I don't know about Apollo's Chariot. Do you know what Apollo's Chariot shirt reminds me a lot of? Um, what's the female He-Man that is on Netflix? She-Ra. This reminds me of She-Ra a lot. Like the color scheme and all that stuff. Hey Heather, welcome. Which one doesn't make you think of the ride? Verbolton? Verbolton is missing a lot to make you think of the ride if that's the one you're talking about. I, I have no idea what would make you think of the ride, though. But Alpengeist for sure. And then they do have the, uh, I guess this is the, uh, is this the Alpengeist himself? He looks awful like the one dude from um, the Rudolph shows, no? 
Alpine guys doesn't look like the ride? Sure it does. There's the lift hill. And there's the snow because you're at a ski lodge, quote unquote. And there's the train. Like it's it's on the hat right there. <laughs> oh man, but it is definitely not. I, I like my hats a little more subtle, but I would also really like some bit of merch from my crazy, weird, odd day here. And then there's the Griffin shirt, which is kind of okay. Verbolton reminds you of Mount Everest at Animal Kingdom? Or are you talking about Alpengeist? Because Alpengeist is literally Ghost of the Alps. That's what that means. And I wish this was a better color than gray, but I guess what colors did they, choices do they have? Yellow and purple? That's tough. And this is the Apollo Chariot, Apollo's Chariot hat, which, whoo, that's intense. It's too much for me. Like, it's so busy. It's so busy. It doesn't, it doesn't fit. The designs are cool. Don't get me wrong. The designs are cool. That could easily be on, like, a poster, something, but not a shirt. But then there's Verbolton. I kind of like that. I kind of like that. And then there's Alpengeist, which is also too busy for me. But... Well, the Yeti is considered, like, a ghost. That's, like, how the ghost manifests or something like that. It's like Poltergeist. So maybe it's a Yeti ghost. I don't know. I'm just making things up, man. Just go with it. Just go with it. You know what would have been cool? If they had, like, a stuffed little car like this. That would be cute. So, yeah. I'm not, still not sure. I'm still mulling one of those purchases. And then in the uh, pin category, I'm really not sure. What time is it now? 8.43. You thought the ski lift itself was possessed. Interesting. I definitely didn't think that. All right. We keep going. Which way we should pop? I think we want to keep going this way and around the upgrade center. Yeah, it's wild how uh, how much I've blown up in the last couple of weeks. Thank you, everybody who has helped by watching all the stuff that I put out and joining me for the live streams, even though the music is heck loud and I'm having to kind of yell over it. <laughs> This is insane. It's like a nightclub. Oh my gosh. I'm trying to think. If anybody wants to take a second and check to see uh, if there's any entertainment still going on, I don't think there is. I had originally wanted to like make time to, for us to all watch something, but uh, I didn't realize I couldn't live stream Celtic Fire, unfortunately, because I went in there and was like taking pictures like crazy and um, the manager came over and was like, hey, you can't do that unless you have permission. I'm like, well, poop, sorry. Definitely didn't have permission. All right. So I'm gonna go this way. There's the dragon kids area. And then over here is where we want to go, I believe. I mean, they're playing German techno. That counts, right? That's in theme for them. I don't know. Hopefully we don't get a content match with this song, because that would be a pain, because then I'll have to mute all of this or cut it out entirely, depending on how bad it is. But wow. <laughs> they really want you to hear this song. So I don't know if everybody heard, but Yes, I'm almost at 2,000, which is amazing. I will be putting a story up or a post up uh, on the channel that will ask for ideas about what to do when I do eventually hit 2,000. We could do like an extra long stream. We could do many things, but I'm not sure. So that's why I need your help. Hey, Beyond the Thrills, how are you? 
We are just coming up on Alpengeist here. I love, love, love the theming of this. I'm kind of hoping maybe I see some... Wait, why is this a Sesame Street store? That's so weird. Why isn't this an Alpengeist store? Tons of Sesame Street pins. Yeah, that's... that's... that's weird. Okay, why isn't there any Alpengeist merch in there? But yeah, here is Alpengeist. What is my favorite B&M invert? Honestly, this one, just because it's the freshest in my mind, it might be this one. I'm partial to Raptor and the Batman the Ride clone at Great Adventure just because that was my very first coaster. I think all of them are pretty good. Raptor, dang, and I forgot about Raptor. Man, it's like choosing between children. I don't know. I don't know, man. It's tough. Very tough. I'm trying to think if I've... Re oh, gosh. And then there's Great Bear. Oh, my gosh. Those are all great rides. And Alpengeist is right there. Can they all get participation trophies? So they, nobody goes home feeling sad? Oh, no, no. I'm talking about the location, not because it's Sesame Street. I thought that that store would have been nothing but Alpengeist stuff or roller coaster stuff because it's kind of right there. I don't see like a photo spot either. Hmm. Interesting. I wonder if we'll see anything over on the bridge. That's where I grabbed a ton of my B-roll. Oh, Talon is great. I own the shirt. 20 years strong. So smooth. So good. Not too intense. However, Alpengeist is a whole nother matter. That one is, this one is intense. As uh, probably the most intense uh, B&M inverted that I've been on. Hmm. Might be too dark. Just missed that one. But here is the track in the first drop. It does not help that the uh, the track is white. No, none of the coasters are. I mean, Hydra is a lot of fun. That one's getting a little rattly. Steel Force is great. And then, um, I mean, those are the big three. But still, Thunderhawk is fun too. My least favorite coaster? Ooh, I mean, I probably don't even think about my least favorite. I'd have to think about that one. Least favorite. But you're right. None of the coasters at Dorney are overly intense. And I love that about that place. They could really use a little something, though. I think my least favorite was Goliath at Six Flags New England. That was just the roughest, most backbreakiest thing that I've ever been on. It was just zero fun for me. For some reason you think GP Think is the best, most intense coaster? I think it has everything to do with the drop being visually the way it is. It's perceived specifically in, like intense because it's just straight down. So if you see straight down and you don't know your physics, like that looks the most intense. Whereas I thought it was kind of like not that intense. It was kind of like smooth and fun. Yeah, this whole thing just happens and you're like, what? And then you hit the brake run and you're like, ow? And then you kind of slowly glide your way to the end. It was great. I thought it was great. And I do love the, the whole thing with the building here. Oh, there it goes. I do like Fahrenheit. I just wish it had better capacity, but it's just not designed that way. I think the layout is a lot of fun. Restraints are a little 
kind of painful, kind of not. They can be, though. And uh, I think most of it boils down to how long of a wait you're up against when you go to it. Because, yeah, it has super low capacity. <laughs> My favorite B&M Hyper. I mean, I'm partial to Nitro only because that's my home parks and that's the one I have the most experience with and like seeing the different facets of it depending on temperature and you know the day and getting night rides and rain rides and stuff. Apollo's Chariot night ride, superior, was amazing. Didn't get to ride in the day, probably something I'll do tomorrow. Uh, Mako, a lot of fun, really amazing air. Uh, yeah, tough. I can say nice things about those three. I'm trying to think, uh, Candemonium, it's a lot of fun. Was my 100th coaster. Not mad about it. What else? I'm trying to think what other hypers I've... B&M hypers I've been on. Uh, not sure. Is it, Leviathan's a giga, right? What about Behemoth? That one has those weird test seats. I don't remember too much about how that one was. Other than it being hyped up and I was like, eh, it was pretty good. But didn't live up to the hype, in my opinion. Oh, I think they're very different rides. I think Candemonium is meant for is like a little family coaster, whereas uh, Apollo's is like like a bigger type of experience, if that makes sense. Why is there big lines? There's always big lines everywhere. This is so annoying at this point. Just lines everywhere and there's some concert happening, but there's still crowds. Everybody wants a funnel cake or kettle corn right now. I haven't been to Great Escape yet. Yeah, Leviathan is a giga, all right. Yeah, Candemonium, I think, is perfect for the front of the park style, like, like very welcoming type of thing. It's not too intense, but uh, it's also a lot of fun. It's like uh, a, if you took Slinky Dog Dash at Hollywood Studios, and made it bigger. Oh, there it goes. Let's go down by the water. I don't know if we'll be able to see much though. Can't believe how dark it got so quickly. Sorry, I was protecting y'all from the the spray. <laughs> kind of want to sit and wait for one more of those, though. <laughs> Leviathan is an amazing looking coaster, and I still have a couple credits open at, uh, at Canada's Wonderland, so I'm hoping to get back there at some point. I think I have three left that I didn't do when I was there, because there's just so much to do in one day. I'm hoping to go to Great Escape in like a week or two, hopefully, like fingers crossed. Oh good, another uh, another train's coming. Do you think, you think Candemonium is way more imposing? It's all right. I think it's supposed to just be fun kinetic energy for the front of the park. I don't know if I'd call it imposing though. It's called Candemonium. So this is Griffin, this is the ride that I tr the ride number two that I tried to get on last week after our live stream at King's, or not last week, two weekends ago, after the live stream at um, King's Dominion. So the big thing about it is that it can do straight drops, like vertical, what do you call this, 90 degree drops. And you always, if you're in the front row, you just, you look down at the drop right before it happens for like a second or two. My favorite thing about it is it has like crazy oversized inversions. The interesting thing for me about Griffin though is that it goes from one drop like that to an inversion into another drop. 
and then it has this water element down here that we're gonna watch again. I am not sure personally where Drachenfire was, but I'm sure you can, somebody in the chat might be able to know that. Is Sheikra the same layout as Griffin? Are they like clones of each other basically? I-305 is probably one of the most intense things that I've been on if not the most intense thing I'm, I've been on, except for the end of the voyage. The voyage at the end is just like, doesn't let, want to let you go. Whereas I-305 is like very, very intense, 45 seconds of your life. And I couldn't do it more than three times in a row. I had to give up. I didn't probably didn't do it that Griffin is slightly more intense because it's taller, but is the layout similar? So there's like the two drops and the water element and all that stuff. Oh gosh, terrible timing. The uh, concert is dumping out right now. Ay, Dios mío. Let's see, more lines, long lines for food and stuff. What time is it? Almost nine, wow. Time flies when we're live streaming. Well, let's see. I think the plan is going to be watch fireworks, say goodnight to everybody on the stream, um, and then turn around and try to get an Apollo night ride in the back. Yes, yeah, some Spanish sneaks out once in a while. That's okay, right? Like, it is one of my languages. But also, you were here when I said Auskas it and... Uh, Nobody, nobody batted an eye. Oh, I don't want to waddle anymore. There's just people everywhere and oh, they're selling shirts here. That's why it's slower. Yes, they will run the fireworks during, uh, run the coasters during the fireworks. When I came here last time, I actually was on Apollo's chariot when the fireworks started and it was amazing. Would recommend. It's just like um, some rides at Disney people recommend going on. Uh, my favorite was actually the Seven Doors Mine Train, but um, I've also done, actually, no, Back, Backspace Delete. Uh, Big Thunder Mountain was the best experience I've had so far with riding something involving fireworks. But then. Uh, some being in some parts of a uh, Seven Doors Mine train was pretty cool. Oh, that's easy. Uh, the Wacky Taxi ride, the Gravity Group ride, that one is amazing. Why isn't it coming to me? Oscar, Oscar, of course, Oscar's Wacky Taxi. That was the best. It reminds me a lot of like maybe a slightly more, more upscale wooden warrior that's at Quasi in Connecticut. And, but both of them are just like have no business being as good as they are because they're meant for like kids and families. But like that didn't stop Gravity Group from making an amazing coaster, in my opinion. How bad were the waits today? Between like 60 and 90 minutes. This is so cool. I wish you could like use that as a photo op, but like be a little closer to it or something. That would be nice. A couple of underrated attractions at Hollywood Studios. I think a lot of people sleep on the Frozen sing-along because they think it's for kids and stuff, but there's actually a lot of like very fun improvisation that the storytellers do. It's not just the soundtrack. There's a lot of fun things in between that I don't know what to say. Like I was actually cracking up because I went in there at the behest of my girlfriend and then had a lot of fun. Um, I think Muppet Vision 3D doesn't get enough love. Uh, what else? I'm partial to Alien Swirling Saucers. 
that's because Alien is very much like, I don't know, just brings me joy and makes me smile. Yeah, I can't think because of anything more because the park doesn't have many attractions to begin with. This is a beautiful park. I wish we could have started the live stream a little bit earlier. Unfortunately, I was in line for Tempesto, which makes me just think of pesto, and then I get hungry. Speaking of which, I should try to eat, shouldn't I? Because most things I notice close at like 9.30, as far as food goes. Maybe I can pick up like a small bite of something. Yes, Muppet Vision, very underrated. Should have gotten a like pumped up and gigantic upgrade to full HD or 4K or whatever they can do nowadays by scanning film. And um, I think the carpet inside the theater is totally done. And a couple of things feel a little outdated, like the very, very end of it, <laughs> where <laughs> the uh, Hollywood studios that um, you're looking at at the very end when like the uh, wrecking ball comes through the wall. It's very different. All the people are dressed like it's uh, 1994 <laughs> or whenever it opens. <laughs> oh, I, I think that low capacity coasters like Tempesto have no business being a, in a park like this. Those should be at like little, like it's too intense for like little parks too. Like, I think at Lake Compounds, it's a pretty good fit, but it's so low capacity. I don't understand why um, SeaWorld or SeaWorld San Diego got one over there, Electric Eel, for the same reason. It's just without being able to have more than one train, you're just cutting yourself off at the knees, unless it's like an affordable ride to, to do uh, CapEx on. And that makes life a little bit easier. I have no idea. I don't really rate those highly, especially when your total experience is like a whole 35 seconds. Like, that is no fun to me. Because the wait right now is 90 minutes and people are waiting 90 minutes for a 35 second ride. Do I watch Coaster Studios? Um, not intentionally, just once in a while when they come up in whatever I'm searching for. Bush Gardens is committed to preserving our natural resources and our environment. Please help by using the specially marked containers located throughout. Catching up on chat real quick. Yes, Alpengeist is still here. I wrote it today. It was amazing and probably the favorite thing, my most favorite thing that I wrote today. Grogan's Grill, not open. Grogan's Pub open. Hmm, maybe I can grab a small bite in there. Just because we're getting ready for fireworks at, I believe, 9.30. Let's see what the, uh, the wait is like here. Beverages? They have something else. Uh, it's just chips and pretzels. To my surprise, I did not drink anything today. I should try to amend that. Nope, I have not been to Dutch Wonderland. Another one that's on the list. That can be a little day trip though. Rather than something like this where I had to do the drive last night immediately after work. Let's see. Nobody sadly knows charged. Oh, no idea. Finnegan's Flyer is about to go if you all want to watch that. I was surprised how much air this gets. Actually, no, we should go over onto the bridge. Did a lot change when Merlin's took over? 
I've heard n some not so nice things about Merlin's, to be honest. Well, it's not Merlin's anymore, it's Palace now? Or something like that? Merlin's is the one that does Legoland, right? Oh, Merlin's the roller coaster. Gotcha. I thought you were talking about Merlin's Entertainment or whatever they're called. Oh no! I rode it, not on this side, but the opposite side, like facing the queue. The views were really cool. I wasn't seeing anything about taking the water park with us anymore, but that's I had to look up what Palace owned because I did end up getting a, uh, annual, the Platinum Annual Pass. There are like, uh, water parks in Hawaii that I could get into right now using the Platinum Pass. It's amazing. I didn't know how far their reach extended with Palace, but it's a lot of water parks across the United States, not even just the continental United States. There were a couple places in New England as well that I hadn't even heard of. Hmm. Interesting. I did not know about it being owned by uh, Hershey. The Elite Park Storyland. Yes, who could forget Storyland? When are they getting their uh, Giga Coaster, I wonder? Or are they going to get an RMC at Storyland sometime? Wow, I completely thought this uh, was about to start. But this poor ride op is doing this by herself. This is another thing about staffing here. It takes a while to get this ride going, huh? But I think it's about to start. Alright, so they need a progression coaster there. So you go from the Junior Gravity Group coaster well, it's a gravity group. They're known for their airtime, like Wooden Warrior and uh, Wacky Taxi. That's why I'm saying it's only natural that they get like an airtime machine in there, like RMC or maybe a B&M Hyper. <laughs> I'm I know I'm kidding. Probably not as exciting as I hope because you can barely see it. And I think this is the last one anyway. Did I like Skyrocket? Actually, I had a really good ride on it when I went. I have heard though that it can kind of be moody and you can get good rides and bad rides on it. But I definitely got a good ride on it. So I felt very fortunate. I'm not saying it was my favorite or anything like that, but I thought it was fun. So, folks, do you guys know where is a good spot to watch these fireworks? I'm guessing like any old bridge would do, but there's probably tons of people on these bridges. And if I remember right, they're coming from somewhere over by Oktoberfest. Yeah, it's Skyrocket 2, but it's like just completely vertical. Whereas the Skyrocket over at Kennywood is something that can run at least two trains, you know? Oh, why did I go this way? Whoops. 
Let's see, let's see. I know there's no food in this Scotland area. The stables was super cute. Oh, they're picking up all the poop over there. Woo, I can smell it. The wind is carrying it over here. This is uh, one of the things that I want to do for the live stream if it hadn't been pushed back. It's to do the railroad together. That was one of the most fun things we did over at Knobles. Because I didn't know everybody yelled in the tunnels. And that was such a surprise to me, but apparently it's like a tradition. Something that you just do. I thought that was very strange. But whatever. It's their thing. Let's see. I think the owl has been put away. I did say hello to him this morning. The parking lot is a great view. Yes, I would have to agree. However, I need to get onto Apollo's chariot. That's how good the night ride was. All right. Just, just look at all the people here right now. Jeez. You know what I kind of want to do? I kind of want to see what the wait is looking like for um, a Dole Whip or something. The bridge between Italy and Oktoberfest, so kind of where we were watching Verbolten. I think that's where we're going to head. Let's see. I did not check out Forest of Fun or the Kitty Coaster in there. I actually think you need a kid to go on the Kitty Coaster now that I think of it. They have Dole Whip over at, um, what's it called? In Italy. Oh my goodness. <laughs> It sounds like a Muppet song, but in Spanish. That's amazing. That's so cute. Okay, um, Forest of Fun is their Sesame Street area. So like their kids area, basically. Here is Escaped from Pompeii, which I sadly tried to ride, but all I did was waste 45 minutes. You think? Uh, I'll ask, I'm gonna come back tomorrow. Maybe if I come in early enough, uh, some operator will take pity on me or something. Let me uh, get that credit, you know? Man, I would love to get gelato. Maybe I can get gelato tomorrow, but tonight I'm really craving uh, a little Dole Whip. Plus gelato, you kind of need two hands to enjoy. Where, oh man, that speaker is blown out. So I think a lot of people are gonna watch from here. Huh. Is there a ride that I can take you guys on? Do you know? Because the sky ride little thingy, that, that's not running, train's not running. Nothing is running right now that I know that I could take you on. And the carousel's too far away. Yeah, I think what we're gonna do is I'm gonna grab a Dole Whip and then find a spot to, uh, so we can watch the, uh, fireworks. Wait, did I go the wrong way, guys? Because <laughs> this looks like a bunch of wet people coming towards me. Oh no, there's a bridge. Da Vinci's Cradle. <laughs> no, thank you. I'll lose my Dole Whips. Um, you have the Dole Whip like you would a uh, single serving ice cream. I haven't had a gelato like that. I've always had gelato with, uh, because it's kind of harder, um, with a spoon or something. But a Dole Whip, I have like, it's, you know, ice cream. So you can have that one handed. The pirate ship? Oh gosh, I don't think they'll let me do the pirate ship. I wonder if we could do the uh, 
their teacups that they have here. What's it called? Turkish Delight? I am going to try to do that. Now there's a pirate ship. <laughs> So, I believe Turkish Delight is over this way. Yeah, the Turkish Twist. I want to see if we can do that. There's still a little time, right? But yeah, like I was saying, very crowded. I wonder if I even have enough clips in my vlog to like illustrate just how crowded it is. Because, yeah, these paths are, are a mess. The Turkish Twist? I thought this one was called Turkish Delight. Wow, it has a heck of a line, too. But you know what doesn't have a line? The Dole Whip. Must hurry, must hurry before they close. They already closed one entrance, didn't they? But yeah, the line is backed up. I think that might be a longer wait than, uh, yeah, we won't be able to do that. Can I still get a Dole Whip? We're open for drinks only. Oh no! All right, they're open for drinks only. So there goes that idea. When they put that they're closing at 9.30, maybe they should clarify, because that's hideous. Lame. All right. I'm not loading anybody. There's all those people waiting in line. I think I'd have to wait in line to find out because there's probably only one poor operator on this ride, isn't there? Yes. There's one poor guy operating this full-size teacups. That is criminal. Why would they do that? All right. So, I don't think there's any other dining locations beyond this. They're only doing drinks, but what do they have to drink? That guy got... These people are getting ice cream. Did I just get lied to? Uh-oh. Sad Pantheon noises. Yes. <laughs> Oh, sad pantheon noises. Yeah, it's perfect. Ah, Bush Gardens has half off tickets because they really don't like their employees. They've been struggling without everybody showing up here. <laughs> Seriously, make me a Dole Whip float. Uh, oh my goodness. Thank you and have a great evening. Alright, I'm gonna see how that one by Alpengeist, not Alpengeist, Verbolten. I wanna see how that bridge is. We can watch that. And I have my fingers crossed that I'll stumble on somewhere to at least get a drink. Of course, they have all the glow out. The fireworks are at 9.30 Eastern. So in about 10 minutes? Yeah, in about 10 minutes or nine minutes to be exact. But again, big crowd, just waddling. Hmm. And I noticed something weird. I, I have not found a single vending machine in this park. You just have to wait in a long ass line to uh, get even like a Powerade. 
which is the oddest thing to me. No, the Dark Castle is not here anymore. I have heard about that castle. Is Was it called the, the Curse of Dark Castle or something like that? I don't believe it's here anymore. So they're saying this is a fireworks viewing area? Like this little area here? I don't know, the uh, bridge kind of looked a little bit better, no? We got enough time to go scope it out. If not, we can come back here and see how it is. BGT is getting a Chick-fil-A. A Chick-fil-A Chick coaster. Because that would be awesome. I have no idea if it was popular or not. I just heard that a lot of people were bummed that it left. Hmm. The Bella Casa. I'm guessing they don't sell drinks there. And that place looks closed, huh? <laughs> they sell Peroni. Marco Polo's Marketplace. Maybe I can pick something up there. Hmm. Hi there. Are you selling uh, Angry Orchard here? Yes, we are. Can I have? Uh, could I get it from the tap, please? Yeah. Could I also have a water? Water? Uh, would you like... Yeah, just like a big cup of water. Uh, I'm sorry, what beer is that again? Uh, the uh, Angry Orchard. Angry Orchard. Big Bad Wolf 2.0, that would be awesome. So I, I just got a cider. And a cup of ice water. It's called Chick-fil-A Chick Airtime. <laughs> That's brilliant. Whew, I'm giving myself a brain freeze with this ice water. My camera really stinks at uh, focusing at night, huh? How do you guys deal with this? Like when, uh, oh my gosh, it's so bad. I'm guessing if I flip this around, it's gonna be, this is bad. Yeah, it's just as bad. But at least I'm here. Hello. So we got four minutes. I'm gonna finish this water, grab my cider, and then we'll head over to the uh, to that bridge over there. Hopefully, it's not too packed. Mm. It's so cold. I feel it going down. My <laughs> yes, I started making a normal video, but the lack of lockers and having to wander around everywhere without my camera because it needs to be in a locker um yeah it's not a very good vlog i'm afraid it's like not really tempoed nicely
like to go on Invader, there were no lockers open at Invader, so I had to go over to Alpengeist, leave my stuff there, and then I did Invader and Alpengeist. I had to backtrack for B-roll and photos, and it was a mess, in my opinion. <laughs> yes, uh, Pantheon is a big uh, art piece, actually. It's an art installation. So is Iron Gwazi. It's a special type of coaster. It's a special type of coaster. Um, they're called non-operational and just pretty to look at. Um, well, at the moment, with my experience today, I would have to prefer uh, King's Dominion. I got so many rides on Twisted Timbers, it's not even funny. I had a nice evenly tempo, for it being only open, what, eight hours? I got so much done, I was able to get so much done. But here today, it took me like six hours just to ride like, or no, eight hours to ride like four coasters or so. It was a big old pain in the butt. Dragon Spire is supposed to be a statue tower. Oh. I mean, maybe, yes, you're right. It is just because of the crowds that it made it that I ended up having a better time at King's Dominion. But that doesn't excuse the really poor ops and the lack of lockers and how unequipped they were, how low staff they are like hmm. oh yeah bgw definitely it's pretty it's a beautiful park and it's got a lot going on with the shows and stuff and the animals Ooh, this is looking full It's packed! Yeah, this is completely full. I think we're gonna get it kicked off pretty soon, so I'm gonna try to speed walk back to that garden with the statues and stuff. I've already heard this music. Yeah, I don't know, man. The music is super annoying. They just blast it this whole time. I have no idea about Icebreaker. What's funny though is I know somebody who works there who's already been on it three times. Like, what the heckers. No, they're like blasting and pointing it downwards. It's really just a little too, too much. Having to talk over the music at a theme park is never ideal. Thank <laughs> you. 
I can start smelling it, like the sulfur, the gunpowder. The wind is carrying it this way towards us. Oops. That was loud. Oh, that one was all the way down there. The little bebitos. Pantheon. Literally, the spike is right there. Like in the middle of the screen. <laughs> We were actually just by the queue not too long ago. I'm feeling it's gonna end soon. Damn, that was huge. <laughs> and loud. Let's fight against the current, and I'm gonna try to get onto Apollo's chariot so I can get on the back row there. Let's go, let's go. Let's do this. All right, guys, I hope you had an awesome evening. I'm sorry that this live stream is turning out only being an hour and a half or so. But it could not be helped with the weird, crazy day I had here at Busch Gardens Williamsburg. Definitely not what I was anticipating. Not what I was expecting to experience. All right, we're trying to waddle a little faster than before.
Correct. We managed to do this and we are going to do that night ride, back row, Apollo chariot, right meow. So, let's see. I'll leave you once we get to the, to the actual entrance there, if I even know where I'm going. Because again, I'm having deja vu here, trying to get through a park quickly at night to go to Apollo. Seems like a new tradition now. Okay, but this time I know I gotta make her right. <coughs> Alright. Thank you guys so much for joining me. As, and for many of you, thank you for joining me every Saturday. I appreciate you so much. Because I couldn't be this close to 2K without you. And also for watching the vlogs. And reaching out to me on Instagram kind of where I live for the most part when I'm not doing YouTube so yeah appreciate it so so much and keep an eye out sometime next week for a discussion of ideas of what we can do to celebrate 2,000 subscribers so anyway guys I think the entrance is just ahead um, remind me though <laughs> next time like even at great adventure we're gonna go on the uh, teacups or something but yeah, let me turn this around to say goodnight. All right. Thank you guys so much uh, for joining me for a little while. Thank you for understanding about the delays and stuff. But have an awesome night. And I'll see you next Saturday to be determined. Maybe I'll put up another poll during the week. But have a great night. Sweet dreams. Adios. 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 Adios.